Welcome to episode 8 of Yeah The Girls, the official Geelong Cats AFLW podcast brought to you by Deakin University, home to the world's number one sports science school. Renee Gehring here, joined by Becky Webster and Georgie Rankin, as per every week. Good morning, girls. Morning. We're in a different setting we this morning. Are. We are. Back in the boardroom. We've just taken a few minutes Very to adjust our chairs. So those that are watching uh, on YouTube, um, yeah, we've played with the hearts a little bit. Hopefully we don't just start lowering as we go down. <laughs> but we're overlooking. Us. Doesn't the ground look good? Mm. Oh, the sun's actually oh, popped in. The rain stopped. I just looked and thought, what a beautiful deck. It has been really good since round one. Mm-hmm. Sometimes during pre-season I was like, Oh, it's a little mushy. How are they going to fix this? <laughs> but they managed to make it look great. They do a so. And the weather's been a bit funny, hasn't it? Like, it yeah. was just pouring a minute ago and now it's sunny and it was a bit like that on game day. But yeah. it held up for, for most of the game. It was a bit bizarre on game day, wasn't yeah. it? And then the wind picked up and every now and then it would just drop and... And then oh, after half time, like, we came out and it was, like, drizzling and I was like... Oh, I know. It was just sunny and And hot. I had a second of going... I should have put the long sleeve on. <laughs> oh, yeah, Meg did the same thing. Did Meg I, was, do it? I was going to no. do a half time change and then um, last minute decided, no, yeah. I'm going to wear it once this season. It's got to happen. I love this. And the Guernsey <laughs> looked, You look so good in the long sleeve. It's very good. Um, it did. Oh, Fraser yeah. was wearing the long sleeve. Scotty was mm. wearing the long sleeve. It's a and beautiful it looks great. Guernsey. Such a nice jumper. Um, and it was a great day. Yes. Um, we'll obviously talk to the game, but. Um, Jelaine Round, yep. um, the Welcome mm-hmm. Country prior to the game and um, obviously seeing that across the whole um, competition this weekend was really great to see um, lots of great things happening. We've got yeah, a big show special. lined up for you today, so we'll be looking back at the weekend's game against Fremantle. We'll find out which cat is that. We'll be Rankin with Georgie Rankin and we'll also be vo- vo- joined by a very special guest, Julie Crock Grills, uh, we know her as Crock, uh, on the eve of her 50th AFLW game. Um, she's got plenty of career highlights. I can't wait to see Crock on know. the potty. Yes. <laughs> I was talking to her this morning Croc. and she's like, I just don't really know where I'm going to go with this. Like, Don't <laughs> ask me too many questions, I might go rogue. We'll go real hard-hitting <laughs> questions for you, Crock. She's great. an amazing person, obviously been around the club um, <laughs> since the beginning of our AFLW journey, mm-hmm. so lots to chat with her about. So it's all of that and more thanks to Deakin. Um, and we're feeling good. We're, we've come in Monday morning, um, ready to get into some training. The sun has just come out. This is a bit different to last week when we <laughs> <I know. laughs> had to hype each other up before the podcast yes. last week. Um, <laughs> no, back on the winner's list, which is, which is really great. And obviously back to some of our best the footy that we wanted to see and I think mm-hmm. that um, chatting prior to the pod, lots of lots of people um, stood out but again it was that everyone playing their role, um, mm-hmm. seeing the ball, the movement that we wanted to see, um, yeah lots of great things to take out of the weekend. Yeah completely and like just to be back on the home deck, mm. sort of you can, not, you know like playing away is always great as well but you know you have your routine you can be at home walking through the four walls you know getting strapped on our tables that we get strapped <laughs> yeah. at training like all of it just sort of intertwines and you just feel you feel the that Geelong feeling when you walk through the doors yeah even walking like when you walk out and I like the the time that we have before the game I just realized how echoey I was sounding um the time we have before the game where you just sort of take in the ground mm-hmm. and like at that point, you know, there's not too many people there and you're just kind of looking going, this is home. Yes, honestly, though, <laughs> it is. is. And, yeah, like as you mentioned, Renee, there were some really great performances over the course of the four quarters. And um, I think if you looked at the scoreline, it felt like we probably we should have been up by five goals. Mm. <laughs> there was a few <laughs> posties, <Yeah. laughs> a few misses that were just like, Oh, damn. But, like, we never felt out of the game at all, did we? We felt very in control, which was great. And to sort of bring that combative pressure around the footy again this Mm. week, you know, that really drives um, our standard and what we try to achieve every week as well on the ground. So, yeah, to sort of hone back into that, you know, contested footy stuff and get those numbers up was really great to see. Yeah, and I think our ball use as well, like you Mm. touched on it before, Nay, but that inside to outside that Mm. we've been talking a lot about, which, as you said, once you have that pressure around the source and you win it there and you trust, you know, if that mid's going in to win the footy, well, I'll hold out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Getting that, the shape around, and then some of the decisions of changing angles to just Mm. open up the ground and get some, you know, nicer um, forward 50 entries. You know, there was a couple of times, one where Shan just was sort of dancing around a little bit early in the quarter, but then 
no, you know, doesn't... Um, no panic. Yeah. No panic just hits Nina and it's slightly mm-hmm. wider but it's like, this is great, this makes them Control shift. Again. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, Das yeah. did a similar thing where she came out and then I reckon she hit Neen's on a lateral as well where it's like, it just allows us to um, retain the ball for a bit longer, makes mm-hmm. them defend for a bit longer and then we get a better look when we send it inside 50. And that's it, we did had more inside 50s that were deeper entries than yeah, previous completely. weeks. Um, and then the pressure um, from those, at like mids and forwards in the forward line to keep it inside 50, but mm, also yeah. um, the back line had time to set up and mm. the Gunj um, and Meg getting those intercept marks alongside many others throughout that, um, but we're able to retain it. So it spe- fe- felt like it spent a lot of time yep. in our forward 50. And as you said, like we missed a few goals, but which the, mm. the scoreline could have been um, even bigger, but the control was there for the four quarters. I think that's what we've been looking for for that consistency for those four quarters. Yeah, completely. I felt definitely that connection throughout the lines was so mm. there on mm. the weekend as well. And um, I don't know about you, G, like playing in the back line, I felt like the comms are up from the start and they just – they continued all the way through the game, which was really good. And, you know, sometimes when you get a bit m- more fatigued and the footy's not coming your way, that, that communication can drop a little bit. But, yeah, across the four quarters, I felt like it was really strong across most of the lines. And, yeah, I thought – so many positives out so of the game. So many positives. Because yeah. you can get the same thing as well, I reckon, when you are when you are in control mm. and we're sort of seeing it a lot now forward half, then a similar thing, your comms could drop off because you're going, oh, well, we've just got control yeah, here. And absolutely. You're, you know, you're getting caught watching the magic that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it really was, it gave us time to get set. And mm. then, you know, I'm sure we, we do have it here, bolded and in capitals, yes. but <laughs> that connection where, Beck, you come around, Darce feeds you the handball and you finish with a goal as one of our defenders, you know, getting fed from the midfield and everyone gets around, you know, that moment. Obviously, mm. it was it was on the buzzer too, which made it pretty, oh, it was a few seconds <laughs> pretty cool just atmosphere. Straight in. <laughs> but that's that connection piece of and, and that communication of she knew exactly where you were. You knew that was your time to go because we were sound behind the ball. Mm. And that's when that comes into play. And really important too, I think, that, that we were set up because the way Fremantle were playing and we expected them to a little bit was to go fast and yeah. as soon as um, they took a mark or if it was on the ground, it was moving forward at pace. But um, the defence did a great job all day um, in, t- in most of the time um, stopping that and turning back over. So really, really good to see. Um, as we said before, we've had... No, like, it was really hard to pick a high performer of the week this we week. Go to um, a few <laughs> Let's give yes. this person honourable mention. Maybe this one too. <laughs> Probably two thirds of the list. Well, this is exactly right. Um, presented by our high performance partner, Deakin University, a global leader in sport education. Um, as we said, lots of players um, could name everybody. I think everyone played their role really well. Um, a few special mentions. Um, Rach. Uh, it deserves special mention. The way that she was going hard at the ball a few times, I was like, I feel sorry for the opposition right my here. My body tackle, was, I was like, oh. <laughs> oh my god, I know. The one I reckon where I she said, whacked in, yes. like in the in the fifty, yes. and she's just pressed up, like, and it was like, bang. Oh. Yeah. I remember yes, saying to her, I'm like, gotta go, Rach, and I was like. She you went. were already yeah. going like, <laughs> yep, that's great, that's so good. But she did, she moved to that, the, the power that we know that she has and made it really hard for her oppo all day and then also brought that, that, the drive through to, mm. to get the ball moving forward. So um, special mention to Rach, Megan Gunj, we've said intercept marks between the two of them um, mm. all day long, set up behind the ball and that doesn't just happen because um, we know the stars that they are but mm. the defence line as a whole is working as a unit and then those two have the opportunity to go off and take those into mm. their marks. So it's a credit to the whole back line. But um, special mention to those two. Becky, do you want to mention our high performance of the week for this week? Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I, had a, I had a blank. I'm like trying to like see. Sorry, I'm like, like, yeah. I've got like five people's yeah. names written down here. Sorry. <laughs> AMAC, of course, yes. played a phenomenal game. She I did. thought her contested footy was amazing and she's really been working hard on that inside to out and her driving of her legs and transition and all that sort of stuff. So um, she's been phenomenal for most of the season and um, on the weekend was no exception. So I think 30 disposals, mm. eight tackles. Maybe we'll check the stats, but she (laughs) was, yeah, her um, inside work to out was phenomenal and she just was a real driver in there for um, our game on the weekend. So congratulations, AMAC. Great work, AMAC. Might make a little special mention of um, something that was seen in the crowd on the weekend as well. Um, a poster shout from one of the supporters. Shout out to the pod. Yes, oh, no. a bit of Actually, a shout out to the other girls. Oh, you won't be able to see it. Maybe yeah. you can zoom in. We might in. post something. We can put, um, that, put, put that, that up. In, in colour maybe. So you want to read out what it says, <laughs> Chuck G? Well, well it it's, a, it's a little poster that says, the biggest battle in all of football, yeah, the girls, versus 
Rollers and rockers is what we think that it says on there. But um, it's the, the two potties. Battle Rio's, of the potties. Yeah. yeah. We love podcast. That. And we yeah. won it. Yes, we won it. And, and we'll have to check the, uh, the stats of the potties. Oh, hopefully we're winning that Our too. listeners. <laughs> yes. Get the numbers up, guys, um, so we can take on those rollers and rockers. But, I do um, love that. Like, that. That's, that that's is amazing. getting around And I love the football. photo of, like, him. He's so just, like, serious, like. You know that guy that holds up holds those signs? Sign. Like, he yes. looks like that guy. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it is I funny. As that. much as people I've seen um, around the place in Geelong talking footy and, and us, they've also been, hey, I've been watching the other girls. And, oh, my and God. Yeah. I get that I love so the often potty. as well. I was at um, post-game, actually, last um, last week in Warrnambool. Mm. I'm in the ground, actually, mm. with a number of the fans because they were having kick-to-kick post-game. <laughs> and I'm out there doing a bit of a run. And it would have been, like, 10-year-old, came up and asked for a photo and then said... Hey, I listen to Yeah, the girls every week, and I love it. And I reckon I, like, I know the one. He came up. Was it? Was it a little boy? Yeah. And he came up to me, and he's like, "I said it to Renee too. I, I let oh. her know." And I'm like, Bless. "Yeah, but love it. We love it." Um, so we'll just take it that we're winning that as well as we had the win on the weekend. <laughs> but um, do love to see the signs in the in the crowd on the weekend, and and that was a different one to see, and we yeah. do, we do appreciate it. Collingwood, um, this week we turn to mm-hmm. Sunday game, 105 at Victoria Park. We have played there before. Actually, we mm. had a practice match earlier uh, before the season kicked I off. I hope the conditions are different. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> we, did, we touched on it, I think, in our first episode of the we pod. Did. Um, the wet and woolly uh, conditions there. Um, Collingwood are building in their season. Obviously, we've seen them take on um, a number of different oppositions and, and take it to some of – they beat Brisbane a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago and um, another good game this weekend – Again, we focus on us and looking forward to the preparation for that um, during training this week. But it would be remiss of us not to mention a couple of special milestones that we have. And we're going to have Croc on the show very shortly, which we're excited about. So Croc playing her 50th game um, of AFRW and also um, for the Cats. Mm -hmm. Um, So she's played all 50 games here. And it is Meg McDonald's 50th Cats game. So we celebrated her 50th game um, knowing that she played a couple of the Bulldogs prior to coming to the Cats. Um, so Croc and Meg are actually our first ever players to reach 50 games for the John Cats. So special mention to those two. They actually signed on the very first day, so we might touch that on that True, with Croc. that was one of your clues. Yeah, it was that one was of one my of clues. clues. As, yeah, so um, really special weekend. Looking forward to this game. It's yep. going to be a big game. Sitting equal on the ladder currently. Um, we know the ladder is, is really tight currently and it's really interesting to see the results week to week. Mm. But um, looking forward to it. We'll focus on us. Yeah. Exciting. Pumped. All right. Well, very shortly we're going to be talking to Julia Crockett Grills, so stay tuned. There's a reason Deakin Sports Management course attracts the greatest talent the nation has to offer. Because when you join the longest running sports management course in Australia, you'll gain access to unique opportunities with leading clubs and organisations. Their partnership with Geelong Football Club, multi-elite industry partners will open the door to exciting placement experiences that connect you with the best athletes, managers and administrators in sport. Help shape the future of the sports industry. Secure your part in the golden decade of sport. Head to deacon.edu.au. And we are back. And as we mentioned earlier, we have Julia Crockett Grills, Croc, on the back, on the eve, I should say, of her 50th game for the Geelong Cats and of AFLW. Welcome, Croc. Thank you for coming on this morning. How are you feeling? What a pleasure. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you? How'd you pull up from the game, Del? Not too bad. Um, had a bit of a beach swim yesterday. Oh, Very lovely. relaxed. It was nice. It was freezing. Yeah. <laughs> it was it? freezing. I went in as well and I was so cold. Chattering. After I got out of like a hot shower for about 10 minutes, I was still oh, really? chattering. Yeah. So, so cold. cold. Where's your local spot? I uh, went to Torquay. I had a friend over actually oh, and nice. he was dying to see the surf. So <laughs> get him in the swell. <laughs> yeah. We went and had a look and I jumped in and the beautiful market was on and oh. so it was very oh, relaxed. What's the market on? Very relaxed weekend. Yeah, yeah. I love oh, that. Stunning. After a beautiful win. After a great yes, win. Yes, how good. Well, Croc, we really enjoy um, getting to know a little bit more. We said this um, when we had Jackie Parry on, I think, that um, often we don't delve into people's like footy histories and, and what they did prior to footy. We all come together and we just um, we forget to ask these questions sometimes. So we really love the opportunity we have on the podcast to, for us to learn, but also for the listeners to learn a little bit about where you've come from in your footy journey and getting to this point. So you grew up in Kyabram um, and played yep. footy with the boys in the under-12s. and yeah, And then... That was it. So how did it actually happen? Like, I, I did well, footy, but I wasn't able to play uh, when I was younger. Um, obviously, a little bit different. Um, how did it, what's it, that position that you get to at the end of that under-12s 
Do they actually have a conversation yeah. with you and say, um, you're done? Oh. Or how did you remember what that got I mean, to? I was pretty young. I think it was probably a conversation with the parents yeah, and yeah. then probably mum and dad were like, oh, you can't play next year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I sort of battled that with, all right, well, I'm going to play cricket because I want to play yeah. with the boys. Yeah. <laughs> and they let that. you play cricket? Yeah, so I played cricket and that's sort of, I had a bit of a cricket journey before footy. I was about to say, um, you were yeah. a good cricket. Yeah. Good cricket. Yeah. Give, us, tell give us, us some background. Yeah, <laughs> tell us your biggest highlight. Yeah, <laughs> no, I played heaps of cricket after that. Um, I actually met Shani playing cricket. We did a year playing for Victoria, I think, so together. Yeah. Wow. In the juniors. Um, wow. So when she came on board, I was like, come on. That is hey. great. We actually called her Emo back at footy. <laughs> what? That, um, emo, like emo. Oh, Emerson, oh, like yeah. emo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't imagine Shad wearing black or having the paint. Um, paint I don't think she likes it, so yeah. <laughs> I noticed it has have a you ever on pulled, Yeah, have you ever pulled it out here? I have, and it didn't get a response. <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny. Um, but yeah, and then once I moved to Melbourne when I was 18, um, a few of the cricket girls played football and said, come play footy, and I was like, yeah, absolutely, so... Yeah, started again when I was 18, I guess, and have played since then. Yeah, what league was that in? That oh, I don't know what league it was. Yeah. I was playing for Scoresby, oh, yeah. which is like mm. East and Melbourne, yeah, right. and then Knox, and then Box Hill Footy Club. Yes. And then to the Cats. Yeah, Renee was reminiscing on uh, the VFL yeah. Grand Final. Yeah. 2018. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to talk about that on here. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, for those that, that aren't aware, in 2018, the Geelong Cats VFLW took on Vox Hill and, um, and Croc, uh, they came away the winners. I think Phoebe was in the team as well. Yeah, Williams. she was. It was um, and we both already signed. Yeah, like, you both, both signed for the 2019. We both already signed for the Cats Um Leading into the grand final, so yeah, it's not something we bring up. <laughs> 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 that was that Eddie had, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. it was. Yeah. That would have been yeah. a pretty cool experience. Yeah. yeah, we actually played. Um, Ge- uh, Geelong. sorry, Marvel Stadium, not Eddie had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> we played Geelong a few weeks before the finals, and I was playing up against Flinny. Oh, and yeah. Flinny oh, actually said to me, "She's like, oh, I'm going to see you in the hoops or something." And this is before I had. Heard oh, anything yeah. from Ben or yeah. Oh really? Oh, really? <laughs> She's like, You're coming Flinny. to the hoops. <laughs> it was something along those yeah. lines and I was like, Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> no and way. How did it like come about, Croc? So you, we've talked about the fact that you signed on the same day as Meg Mac. Um, you're playing for Box Hill in the VFRW. Was there a process, was there a few clubs it was only us and North coming in in twenty nineteen. Was it a clear cut straight um, to Geelong or was there a I'd had a chat with Bulldogs and Carlton. Um, but yeah, Benny Waller gave me the full tour down here with, mm-hmm. with Hoodie back at the time, and yeah. yeah, there was no question about it really. <laughs> yeah, and signed pre draft, signed pre draft, yeah, yeah, very and lucky. We locked her in, <laughs> yeah, and we're so very good. glad um, that we did croc for all that you've brought to our club from the very beginning. And, um, and we, we just mentioned before, obviously, playing pretty consistently throughout your whole career here at the Cats and t- taking off from round one, that win against Collingwood, which we should mention, uh, that, that big win of one point. Um, <laughs> but it was a, an amazing game that we've, um, all of us actually were a part of um, from that very first beginning. Big crowd that day. It was a it? big crowd. Oh, I know. Sometimes crowd. I like run out and I'm like, God, it'd be good to have 18,000 yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we can't hear our fans, but God, True. I remember that day. That was, that so was cool. a big. That was a big day. I mean, Croc, I... Um, Hearing you say that you came down to the club and you were just like, there was no no question there. I look at you and your character and I just think you're one of the most ultimate club people. Um, you're so selfless. You're an absolute utility. You get thrown around everywhere. Um, but I reckon what I admire the most is just that just that ultimate like love for your teammates and what we create. And I guess like to get an insight into what it means to you to be part of a footy club or those those things that really get you up and about and that you really value. Just give us an insight into what that looks like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I think it's just the girls that you're playing with. I just wouldn't be able to run run out anywhere else without them next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then having to build those relationships again, I'm like, I like my people and I'm happy with my people, so mm. I wouldn't want to change anything. Mm. Um, and then just, yeah, the way that we... I've been playing football. I probably feel like we've gone through the whole roller coaster of being down the bottom and knowing how that feels and now sort of rising towards the top and how that feels. And 
riding that whole roller coaster with the club it sort of means a bit more I guess um and then yeah you just want more success off the back of it no it's so good I definitely feel like when we're in the race it's always like Where's Krog? Oh my gosh, it's like <laughs> always a high thing. Up. When she's going, like, who's going to be the first one to hit a body today? <laughs> what are you going to do I today, G? And like then I, I couldn't. Stand there like, oh my god! I, don't know. I couldn't imagine that comes from cricket. <laughs> no, it's probably a bit more. Um, you know, you're trying to put them off in cricket rather than. <laughs> so true. The sledge. Yeah, the sledge. Were, were you a batter or a bowler in cricket? I was a bowler. Nice. Um, yeah. So I'd just try and sledge the batters as much as I could. <laughs> no, it's so good. good. We love having you a part of the club, Croc. And as much as you say, like, you, you sort of are that glue for everyone. Like, you can sort of always rely on you to have a conversation, whether it's a tough one or a, or an easygoing one and a um, bit of the life of the party now. But there's a lot of going on outside of footy at the moment for you, which is so exciting. You've moved into a place down here in Geelong, yeah. renovating or... Yeah. Part renovated. You've done your bathroom up, haven't you? Done the bathroom, yeah. How long did you go without a bathroom? (laughs) It was about six weeks through pre season. So I was fully utilising the club. (laughs) I love this. Showering (laughs) most days. (laughs) I hope you'll swipe and Rosie in for Uh, for her. She wouldn't come in, but um, (laughs) yeah, it was tough, but. The, gu- the bathroom looks great now, so we're stoked. No, oh, well, it, it would be amazing. <laughs> and got a little one on the way. Yeah. How yep. amazing is that? Yeah, we are 27 weeks tomorrow, which is that great. Is crazy. Um, and we actually, I've spent the weekend doing the nursery. Oh, oh that, that is so special. Stunning. Been putting it off, been putting it off. Um, but the room's piled up with just people just so generous yeah. and have given us so much stuff. We need to organise it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's amazing, Croc, and we're all so excited. I remember when you brought in the presentation and we were like, oh, my God, just oh, so amazing. And were you surprised? I was surprised, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so I was like, no inkling? <laughs> no. No, no, none. You didn't, you didn't give away anything. But I think I'd said to you, we'd seen Rosie just like she'd come in for something yeah, the day but before like, or something yeah. like that, and I was like, God, she's oh, she glowing. looks good. <laughs> she looks so good. No wonder. Glowing. She's glowing. <laughs> I do love that you were like, guys, it's not me. It's not yeah, yeah. <laughs> just in case anyone was questioning it. And, like, I guess that can be, like, a challenge. Like, um, it's a lot of planning in the process for that sort of stuff to be able to have a baby with your partner, Croc, and to probably hear the news that she's pregnant yeah. would have been pretty Yeah, cool. it was um, very surreal. Um, it feels like a long time ago. It is quite a long process, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Renee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I can see her belly growing and like the room's all getting sorted, it's yeah, getting very real and um, obviously have a footy season to finish, which is making mm. it go very quickly. But I can yeah, imagine. The new year will come around very quickly and be ready for that next chapter. It's very exciting. You'll That's love so every exciting. minute of it, we're sure. Mama Crocs been yeah. going around. <laughs> Been going around the rooms. I can't wait to see you <laughs> holding your bub. Oh, I can't mate. picture it right now, but I'm just so ex- <laughs> so excited for it. I think we've already thrown out like, where is the postseason celebration? Yeah, it's, yeah usually it's usually at Crocs, but we might you might have about twenty babysitting girls. Yeah. Oh, plenty of the girls have already put their hands up for um, babysitting duties, and <laughs> we want to go on date night. So I love it. Excellent. That is so good. So good. Well, I think it's time for which cat is that, Croc? Um, the, the guests are actually winning at the moment on okay. three points. G's on two and a half and Becky's on the one currently. Uh, for those listening at home, which cat is that is our version of Who Am I of our playing group. We're up to um, episode eight, so there's been a few players that you can now cut off your... Well, unless I I would, I, imagine if that I did a second person a second I time. I was talking to Croc's and I was like, no, <laughs> oh, no, Flinny, and I was like, all right, I know the ones that have already yeah. been done. <laughs> So we got to clear them out of the brain. Yeah, unless I sort of. I, I have think also noticed, Becky, you write notes, which is a great idea. Just the first couple, because I'm like, I'll bloody forget <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> That's what I do. It <laughs> hasn't been helping me, Jay. So don't <laughs> don't take any notes from me. All right. So which cat is that? We need to test our buzzers out uh, this morning. Are we going for something new, Jay, today or uh, the original? Um, I'm gonna go buzz. Buzz. I'm gonna go buzz. Buzz. And Croc, you make any noise or your name or whatever you like. Snap. Snap. <laughs> Snap. Okay. Alrighty, let's begin. This cat has played multiple positions for our team. This cat debuted in 2022. 
Wait, what year are we in now? 23? Yeah. Okay. Last year. Two seasons last year. Mm. This cat has a scar on their hand. This cat has two university degrees. This cat has played another sport at a famous stadium. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wrapped clue six. That should have been your buzzer. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> this cat is currently the same age as their number. <clears throat> slow it down, slow it down. Oh, she's tempted. Snap. Yeah, crap. Is it Gunge? It is Gunge. Oh! <laughs> the yes to it. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Wow, yes, you. Gunge. What? Well done. Thank 26 you. is her yeah. number and her age. Uh, the last two were she speaks multiple languages. She speaks oh, Croatian, Croatian and a bit of Japanese. A Croatian sensation. Um, and then this wow. cat is known for their pregame pump up. Oh, oh wow. my that God. That would have given away. But yeah, wow. so Wait, there you go. Renee, you're getting really challenging. Two university degrees. She's a physio and she did exercise science. Oh, I was trying to figure out the scar on the hand. Yeah, she why. said it's a very she, yeah. scar on her hand, so you have to check it out today. <laughs> she said, I don't think anyone will know this. And I was like, yeah, love that. So, wow. hey, well done, Croc. The guests are doing very Jeez. well. Jeez, Becky, we need to lift our game. Oh, like, really, I, should, I shouldn't even have that half point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's all right. Well, I don't, I don't feel as bad when it's a fellow teammate who no. picks the teammate. Yeah. When it's the guest, like, yeah. when it was pitching <laughs> and well. <laughs> Week, I was like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good job, Croc. Well done, Croc. Croc. Thank you so much for coming in. We know your life is busy with work and family and um and training and, and all of the rest. So thank you for coming on and sharing some time and all the very best and congratulations for game fifty this weekend. We can't wait thank to you. um to see you out there for another another amazing game. And um we'll be back shortly with Rankin with Georgie Rankin. The club is hosting the next instalment of our business networking events, Connecting Hoops, in November, in line with our annual business lunch. This year, we're pleased to welcome Martin Heppel from the Resilience Project, where he'll be performing a presentation themed Discovery Resilience. Fox Sports presenter Sarah Jones will be facilitating the event as we hear about integrating gratitude, empathy, kindness and mindfulness into our everyday lives. Thursday, November 2nd, 12.45, in the President's Room at GMHBA Stadium. Visit membership.geelongcats.com.au for details. And we are back and it is time for the segment everyone looks forward to every week. It is Rankin with Georgie Rankin. I think your singing <laughs> is getting – it's starting to overtake. Oh, I don't think so, Jake. I did love actually yeah. when um, I was doing a ranking with Rankin on K-Rock on the Ferris wheel – last week and they did say because I was like oh you're gonna get nays on for her which cat is that and they're like oh we were thinking maybe doing like uh caring with gearing what is that well she's just so lovely I'm sure you'll come <laughs> up with something caring with sorry there's your heads up now oh, you I might have it you might have a if it means one. it's some good things for other people then I'm happy to be involved. when you said yeah. that you were on k-rock <laughs> doing that Mm, secret talent stuff. I was not expecting to see a video of you on the Ferris wheel <laughs> <laughs> getting blown off. I know. I turned up and Pat had said, oh, it just made out the front of the Ferris wheel. And I'm like, oh, there must be like some, I don't know, event on and, you know, people are jumping on. Anyway, then I got there and I was like, oh, where's the thing? And they said, oh, we'll get you on the next round. And I was like, <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny. funny. Which made sense because one of the things they asked me to rank was round things. And I was like, you mean like circular? And they're like, Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it made sense. What was but your top round thing? Round things, I went with bubbles. You know those blow-up things that you like are inside? The big oh, blow-up yeah. balls yeah. and you can, like, like, run around. you can run around bumping yes. into each other. And then the sphere in um, Vegas, is it? You know the big – it's a new like entertainment um, oh. centre and it's yeah, like got okay. massive – it's like projectors on the inside and outside and they can oh, wow. turn it into like the globe or like an eyeball. Or oh, Anyway, right. interesting. Yeah. I would found out at Voxy. Anyway, yeah, nice. great. We're on, we're on, we're on. Yeah, the girls. So, um, <laughs> sorry. Go on, go on. <laughs> little sidetrack. So, for this week, my ranking, and I'm a little bit nervous that I may have done this before, but anyway, hopefully, um, only the avid listeners would know that. Uh, is our top five hype girls now? There's, as we've mentioned from the game, where we could have given out multiple honourable mentions. There is so many that we could have thrown out there, and I think you know each person has it. Oh, sorry, I've just looked and got distracted. It is now pouring rain again. <laughs> That is so sad. Love that for us. That's not inviting. We've got an hour. Hopefully it stops. Oh, no, it's me. I've 
have to hype each other up for that. Okay, so many honourable mentions we could have given, but if we go with the top five, I'm going to come in with one that's, I guess, a bit more on the subtle side, but she always gets around you, and that's Feathers. I don't know if you've Love done, this. whether it's in the gym with her or out on the track, and you might have just hit, you know, a nice little kick, or you've done, gone up in weight and hit a PB, and it's just, yeah, nay. That's great. Good on you. And it's like so good though. There's so much purpose and intent behind what she's saying. And she means it. Oh, yeah. She really means it. So sometimes I catch her like giving a compliment, like, keep running feathers (laughs) while you're doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Like she's so invested in the comment. She's oh, she's just beautiful. And it was awesome to see her back on the track this uh, (laughs) sorry, back in the game this week. Um, because she had an awesome preseason. So And she impacted the game so well. Did she? On your feathers. That did smother you? that she did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And she's done that before. She did it in the pracky, and I'm pretty sure she smothered and gathered as she was going and then so gave good. someone. So anyway, well done, Feathers. You came in at number five. Number four is um uh, it's actually after the the pre-game game pump that usually comes out, and then we go for a hands in. <laughs> And Gunj <laughs> rolls out a one-liner every week and it's something, it's a play on words, it's something to do with the other team's um, so name. It is so good. Some yeah. of them leave you questioning as you walk <laughs> as you walk away from the huddle going, <laughs> yeah. what, did, what did she mean? What did that yeah. one? Yeah. I'd love to give some examples, but I feel like that's an inner sanctum thing, isn't <laughs> it? Is, it, like, it, is, <laughs> it is inner sanctum. Maybe one day when she's on the, on the pod, she, she, share, might, yeah. she might be able to share. But it, it is something that during the week I reckon – at least once I'll have a conversation with someone and they go, oh, I wonder what Gunj is pulling out this yeah. week. <laughs> and she definitely thinks about time. it. So well done, Gunj, coming in at number four. Number three <coughs> was our special guest, Croc, and I gave a bit of insight in that in her pre-game when mm-hmm. you're in the warm-up room. The way she gets around, it'll be like a little push on the chest, like, what are you going to do today? Most of the time it catches me off yeah. guard. I try and avoid eye contact. Because <laughs> I'm like, I haven't got that. Like, what she can just spit out that mm. I go... That's just really cool. Like yes. you, just, you just make that sound so cool, and I want to be hyped with you, but I'm going to say something lame, so I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not joining in. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, but it is it is great, and she gets around to gets around to everyone. So Crocky, well done. It really just brings out the best, <laughs> I reckon. Before we before we head out there. Two and one was pretty tight, but I've gone number two with our girl Bowie. <laughs> My goodness, on the sideline, I don't think she actually takes a breather when she comes off on the bench. She's always up on her feet. She's getting around everyone for for the simple stuff, all the Mm. little things. She's someone who really notices the little things. Um, And just a burst of energy. Like, you walk in and even her being like, hey, G, how are you going? I'm like, I feel good. I just feel good. And the little just, like, high five, like, a high five, job. Yeah. And the like, yeah. point at you. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You feel it. Yeah. Like, oh, my yes. God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Bowie came in at number two. And number one is our girl, <laughs> Becky Webb, <laughs> who actually took our pregame this week. And I think he came in and was like, it's me. You got me today, girls. <laughs> <laughs> just off the cuff on the weekend. I was so like, <laughs> and then you went into like a whisper and I was so drawn in. I'm like, what is she saying? <laughs> and, then, and then finished with a bang. But Beck, I think you're the first one to get around someone on a goal. So, well, actually, it's probably a bit hard for you this season because you're so far back. I usually just get the little, <clears throat> yes. So I wish I could get there, but I've but already every, done a few cases. <laughs> Every other season, mm. I actually genuinely reckon you're the first person who's over there jumping on someone and <laughs> just making them feel that that good after what they've done. So you're definitely a, a hype queen, Bexter, and, and I brought you in at number one. So there is our top five hype girls, but really it's what makes you know our team what it is, is the fact that you've got everyone mm. getting yeah. around each other. There's so many people I could mention, so please don't. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Thanks, G. No worries. So, big game this weekend. We mentioned earlier Collingwood 105, Victoria Park. We would love to see everyone there. Let's get a big crowd down. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a big game. Um, we're looking forward to it. And yes. Well, we've, we beat them in that first game, round mm-hmm. one, but I don't think we've had another win since against them. So. Yeah. Well, that's what I was trying to work out earlier. I was like, Dad said the same thing on the phone. I was like, Nah, we bet them. I'm like, Where's, well, where's Jake? He's usually got yeah. the he, yeah, he knows the stats. He's not here today, yeah. but. I know it's a big game for a couple of 50 gallers, but it's my birthday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's right. Birthday week this yeah. week, Becky. Birthday week, and I just want the ultimate, ultimate present on Sunday. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I'm sure we, we will do our best yeah. to deliver. <laughs> yes, yes. It's all everyone relying will on be onto it. <laughs> well, that is it for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you to our sponsors, Deakin University, and we'll chat to you all again next week. See you guys. See ya.